Hello plant people, it's Nora the Lekker Queen. Thank you for joining me today. We are doing yet another Q&A session today. Thanks so much to everyone who posts a question. I really appreciate it as I'm sure all the others who tune in and watch. Before we go ahead with today's Q&A session, I just want to let you know where you can actually leave your question so that it can feature in the next Q&A. So when you go onto my YouTube channel, that's my banner over there, and you can see where the community tab is. So click onto the community tab. And when you get there, there will be a post that looks like this. And it says Q&A. Put your questions in the comments below. So please try to put your questions on there. When you put your question on the Q&A post, it's easy for me to collect all the questions and make sure I'm responding to every single one. So we'll jump straight into it. The first question is from Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Natalie says, hi, Nora. Time-wise, would it be easier to maintain the plants in soil or leka? I feel it would take up so much more time looking after plants in leka, water changes, bringing to the sink, flushing, etc., than just watering plants in soil straight on the, in their spots. Ooh, this is a bit of a loaded question, Natalie. It's, it's really difficult to respond to because it just, it completely depends. And I can certainly understand why you would think that taking care of plants in semi-hydro takes a lot more time because in some way it may, depending on what kind of setup you've got. But in my particular case, I found it was easier for me to take care of my plants in semi-hydroponics or using LECA because once I've got the reservoir filled, I don't have to worry about that plant. So that plant can go unwatered, as you say, for two, three weeks, depending on how full that reservoir is, and I don't have to worry about it. When I didn't have so many plants, it wasn't such a big problem taking care of plants in soil. I just, yeah, go along with my little moisture meter, check to see who needs water and water them that way. But once I got beyond a certain number, it started becoming a bit unmanageable, especially because, as you might know, I've got three children and the weekends are usually taken up completely with all sorts of activities. I'm running around from one end of the city to the next. And by the time, you know, come Sunday evening, you know, then you've got the laundry and you've, you're preparing for school next week, preparing for work. There just isn't as much time as I would like. So I found that growing my plants in Lekka gave me that little bit of flexibility to say, right, okay, I'll just pick up the pot and go, right, you've got nutrient solution. I don't need to do anything about you. And off I go. But of course, there is all the other added benefits of using Lekka pests and so on that I won't go into but it really just depends on your situation and what you're trying to do. So for sure, you know, it can seem a bit involving, but once you get into a kind of rhythm, you know, you, you kind of know what you're doing. You just, I mean, like I, I go, the plants on this section, just quickly get them out, flush them quickly, change them, leave that. Maybe the next weekend I'll do the other plants. So it's not as regimented as other people might make it out to be. And one of the things I consistently talk about on this channel is that plant care needs to work for you and your life. If something is becoming too difficult, then clearly it's not working for you and it has to go. So, you know, for me, Lekka works for me. And it, you know, I mean, now that I'm doing YouTube as well, I've got to make videos, I've got to edit videos, but I still find time to take care of my plants surprise surprise and of course I put that down to semi-hydroponics so yes it can but no it can't it just really depends on what you're doing thank you for that question Natalie that was a tricky one but yeah Lizette hi Lizette uh, Lizette says hello Nora have you ever heard that too many plants cut the oxygen in the room. I don't believe this, but wanted to know what you think about this. Well, that is that is very interesting. I'd actually never heard that before, to be honest, Luzette. I had to do some Googling and I found out that, especially like in Victorian times or, you know, a long time ago, people stopped people from bringing plants into hospitals because they thought that 
the plant and the people are competing for this finite amount of oxygen, which is just completely untrue. It's, I mean, no, definitely not. I mean, we would be gasping for air in my house. That's definitely not the case. And I know a lot of plants that actually are good for the environment of a home. So I wouldn't be worrying about that at all. Yes, plants do use oxygen for some of their processes, but it's almost negligible compared to the amount of oxygen we use and compared to the amount of oxygen that's readily available. So I, I definitely wouldn't worry about that. Thank you for that question, Lucette. I definitely learned something new there. Eve, Eve says, hello, Nora. Can plants be too old to move into Lekka? I have two almost 10 year old plants. Both are thriving in soil. Would it be too risky to change their growing conditions at this stage? I would say yes, it is risky, especially if you highly value your plants. I would say maybe don't do it, but I would also say do it. I would do it. I, I've done that kind of thing all the time. But you know, it's, it's, you go in there knowing that it's a great risk. It's a great risk that you might lose your plant. It's a great risk that your plant might end up not looking the way it does now. It's taken all this time to get to this stage, change the conditions. The plant might lose a lot of leaves and it just, you know, you basically be going back to square one, maybe, or the plant might die, but it's possible. You, you can do it. I've done it with my bird of paradise which is an example and my bird of paradise i it was a large plant i moved from soil to leka did not do well almost died i almost killed the thing but i persisted and she's now alive doesn't quite look the way it did when it was still living in soil it's getting there but that's a risk that you're going to take and if you are going to do it you need to be very careful you need to be very vigilant so I would definitely recommend using the long method from soil to leka and not just whacking it straight into the leka. And then watch that plant, watch it like a hawk. Just, you know, any change, you know, with those roots, you wanna be just monitoring it absolutely. And just really, Clonex clone solution would be your friend in this instance. So any solution that would help with rooting would be better. So you want that plant to get those water roots going and then put it in Lekka. But depending on the plant, maybe it's a ZZ plant. So you might be putting it straight into Lekka. But the point is to just keep an eye on it and change conditions if you can. And of course, when you do do that, making sure that the plant is warm, the plant is humid, it's in a bright spot, just, just molly cuddle the life out of it just to give it a fighting chance. But if you're not comfortable doing all that, I would definitely say probably not a good idea to transfer a plant from soil to lecker that's been living in soil for a really long time and that you really love. Thank you for that question. Next question is from LD212. And LD212 says, Nora, I have heard you say your golden pothos, recently chopped, was in soil. Yes, it was. Have you had any luck with them in Lekka? I haven't had luck yet with pothos in Lekka. Are they hard to grow in Lekka? Oh my gosh, no, 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 not at all. Pothos are such an easy plant to grow in Lekka and I have had heaps of success. I'll show you some of my pothos. This one here is my golden ivy pothos and this pothos I use <laughs> Whack it out in my videos a lot. That's because she's easy to manage. She's easy to pick up because she's still quite small. And when I put this plant up on the moss pole, it was just like three or four leaves. Look at her now. She's growing really well. She's growing up that moss pole. Those leaves are looking fab. That is my Porthos Golden Ivy living in Lekka on her moss pole. Doing really well. I'll show you another one. This one here is my Marble Queen Pothos living on a moss pole. I will pull that out. Oh. This is her here. That all, that's her in all of her glory. Doing, 
look at that, look at that leaf. This plant is going places. And she's living in Lekka on her moss pole. That moss pole is moist. Look at that. Just look at the variegation on that. That is a porthos. So to answer your question, the short answer is yes, it's very possible to grow a porthos in Lekka and they love it. Give it a try. It doesn't even have to be a porthos that's living on a moss pole. I do have some porthos. I'll Hang on, hang on. I'll show you another one. Only because I can. This one here yeah. is my mishmash pothos. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I don't think I can show you this whole thing. It's living, these cuttings are living in a 20 centimeter pot and I just whacked them in that pot and that's what they do. I've just got this lovely curtain of pothos and that's my plant living back there. It's just sitting there. I love it because I just use it for decorative purposes. It just sits there, a lovely curtain of pothos living in Lekka and it looks fabulous. It's, I, it takes care of itself. It's not growing as well as it could because it just lives in a little dark corner. I need to provide more light for it, but they are so, so easy. Uh, so I highly encourage you to grab a pothos, whack it in a, some Lekka and see it go. Thank you for the question. Real Kitchen Diva White. Hello, Real Kitchen Diva. So Real Kitchen Diva says, this is a long one, guys, pay attention. She says, hello there. I have recently slapped a few of my Hoyas into water and then lekker using the long method. Well done you. And about a month ago, now I see new growth on every one of them. Yay! Today was flush day and I tested pH the water before I flushed my nutrient and it was six. Question, in my case, at least for my Hoyas, can I or should I wait a little longer than two weeks to flush my Hoyas? I think they might be a little more forgiving or it could be a fluke of some sort. If I understand Real Kitchen Diva correctly, she tested the pH of her nutrient solution in the cash pot of her Hoyas after two weeks and that pH was still decent. It was still pretty good. So did she need to flush and change the nutrient solution? Does she need to do it religiously every two weeks? In this case, I would say no, really. It's good to have a schedule and to be consistent about it if, if you're anal about these kinds of things. I am certainly not. And if you feel that it works going for a little bit longer, by all means, do it. There is no need for you to be, you know, religiously changing over stuff that doesn't need to be changed. Maybe I would conduct a little experiment. Once you've got your Hoyas, you've given them a flush, you've checked the pH, you've got your pH at six. Wait for your two week period, test the pH again. And if that pH is six, great, leave it. Come back again in two days, check it. If it's great, leave it, come back again. And Increase that time period every time by about two, three days and see how you go and see the point at which that changes. And if everything else stays the same, the environment stays the same, you're using the same water for your nutrient solution, I would be following the results of your experiment and just go on that. And of course, you're monitoring how your plants are going. And if your plants are going okay, honestly, the longer you can keep it going, good for you. If the plants are fine, everybody's fine. So I'd be really interested to see how you go, Real Kitchen Diva White. Keep me posted and thank you for the question. Janet says, hey Nora, where do you get your clear pots? I know you put your own holes in them. I'm having a hard time finding 20 centimeter pots. This is a very, very difficult thing, Janet. And I know quite a lot of you guys come from the United States and I just, I've tried looking online. I cannot find a US source for the kinds of pots that I use. I get my pots from our local store here called Bunnings and they do sell them on Amazon Australia as well. But I don't know if they'd ship them out to the US and I don't know if that's a cost you're willing to bear. So I don't know if anybody out there knows where Janet can get some 20 centimeter clear pots 
not necessarily the slotted orchid pots, but just 20 centimeter growers pots, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you. Dolly. Hi, Dolly. Dolly says, could you possibly do a short video on how and what you use to cover your catch basins? So for my cash pots, I sometimes use plastic pot liners. So this is a vinyl pot liner. It's very thin, as you can hear, as you can see, it easily deforms. It easily deforms, that's what I buy. That, that you know, a 14 centimeter pot sits lovely in there and that's great. That's what I use for my 14 centimeter pots. So that's that item over there. Now, I don't have them looking like this for my plants because I don't want any light going to my nutrient solution because I don't want any algae growing in my nutrient solution and on my LECA. And if you have not seen a video where I talk about algae in semi-hydroponics, just click on the link above and that'll take you straight to it. And in that video, I explain in greater detail why you do not want to be using a clear cash pot, or rather why I do not recommend that you use a clear one. So I turn this into that, and I turn this into that using duct tape, basically. And one of the things I, two reasons I do that. A, it's the algae thing that I talked about earlier. B, it actually makes this a little more sturdy. So if you look at that, it's not as flimsy as it was here. So I use that, just any, I just get this tape from our local store. It's just some black tape. I mean, you could, I've seen people use white tape. I've seen people use gray tape. You can use whatever color tape you like. It can be yellow, it can be anything. And it can be any kind of tape, electrician set, whatever. Anything that you can find, all we're wanting is prevention of light. That is it. So I use this black one and I cut, the first thing I do is I make three strips. So just, you know, short strips, and then I cover the base. Okay. So I've covered the base of that slap bang in the middle. That's what that looks like. I get another piece and I overlap it on the other one and I push all this down. So that's now covered. So I need another piece to go on there. So that's another piece there. And I cover my pot. So this is the kind of thing I've got initially. So the bottom part of the pot is covered and I've got it covering the sides a little bit as well. I then grab my tape Unroll a little bit of that there. I grab my pot and I position, this is where it's overlapping there and I position it there because I don't want to have any bits that are exposed to the light. And I just keep turning it around. And look, it's, it's, not, it's not perfect. I probably could make it look nicer, but you know, I can't be bothered really. I'm not going to sit here, spend hours trying to make this absolutely perfect when it does absolutely nothing. So I'll just unroll that a bit more. Cover that more until I get to where I started. And then I simply keep going. I press this down and I am now at a point where my pot is completely covered with the black tape and there are no bits where light is going in and that's all done. So that's really, really quite simple, Dolly. I'm sure there's so many other ways in which you could do this. There's so many other ways, but for me, I started doing this, this works for me. So yeah. Next question is from CC. CC says, can you use just water with lecker? Can you? Yes, 
Should you? No. Why? Because leka does not have any nutrition. So when you put your plant in leka and you're using only water, that plant has no access to nutrition. When your plant is growing in soil, the plant has access to all the minerals that it needs in order to photosynthesize, make food for itself and grow. Leka is nothing but clay. Water is nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. Doesn't have any carbon, doesn't have any magnesium, doesn't have any of the other things that the plant needs to survive. And that's why it's important to use a hydroponic nutrient when you're growing your plants in leka. I've got a lovely video, I think is lovely, um, where I talk about nutrition when you're growing in semi-hydroponics, nutrition when you're growing plants in leka. Click on the link above and that will go, that goes in great detail as to why we do the things that we do when we're, when we're growing in semi-hydroponics. Thank you for that question, Cece. Always a great reminder. I know lots of people actually do say, oh, I don't put nutrition, I just use water. But really, think about it. You know, if you're just using water only, you're putting your plant on a severe crash diet. It's not even a diet. There's just zero food whatsoever. Complete hunger. Of course, the plant will be okay for a while because it's still got some reserves in itself. But eventually, those reserves will be depleted and your plant will start to quickly go downhill and will eventually die. So watch that video and let me know how you go. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below. Jamie. Jamie says, I love watching your videos. Oh, thank you. I love making them. And question, how is the Hoya you put up on a moss pole doing? Oh my gosh, you guys are so, you're so curious about this Hoya. I get so many questions about this Hoya. Oh my gosh, it's insane. Hoya, Hoya, Hoya. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here she is. Here she is. She's doing okay. You know, she's alive. She's growing. She's had some new leaves since I put her in up on the moss pole. That one is a new leaf there. She's, you know, the, the vines are getting longer. Hang on, there's another small leaf coming up over there. Yeah, she's doing her thing. She, the area roots have not gotten any bigger. She hasn't really attached to the moss pole yet. But having said that, it is still very, very early days for this moss pole, for this tiny little Hoya. So maybe, maybe in six months, you know, we'll be able to de definitively say what's happening. But for now, as long as she's not dead and she's happy, I'm happy. So that's my little Hoya Crimson Princess, Danielle. Danielle says, uh, love your videos. Thank you. She says, can you share your experiences of how you keep your plants alive in winter? And also, how much foliage focus do you normally use when watering? And do you change the rates for winter or summer? Okay, let's tackle the first question, winter. It, it does get pretty cold in Victoria, especially if you're up in the Alpine region. Although someone did laugh at me last time when I said 15 degrees, and I'm like, oh my God, 15 degrees, that's flip-flop weather for us. <laughs> but it's cold, okay? So what do I do? Look, I don't really do much. So I just keep my house warm. I, you know, we, we get cold, so we always keep it warm. I would love to have some, fat, some heaters or a plant room, but I don't have that. So unfortunately, my plants are not as warm as they could be, and that's, that's pretty much it. There's, there's nothing I can do about that. Not yet, anyway. So let's talk about foliage focus. Foliage focus, the low rate is five mils per liter. And that's generally what I use for most of my plants. You can go up to 7.5 mils per liter. So if your plants are vigorously actively growing more in the spring, summer season, you can go up to 7.5 mils. You can even go up to 10 mils per liter. It just depends on how your plants are responding to it. So I do use the lower side of the spectrum because I, you know, there's just no need to go any higher, I don't think. But when they're really aggressively growing, I do up it up to 7.5 mils. Well, 
that's it for this week thank you very much for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and most importantly don't forget to look for the q a post and put more questions thank you and i will see you in my next video goodbye